All right, so I just dropped a banger of a video talking about how barbarians are pretty much the number one class in the game as of right now. People were confused. They said, first of all, where's the build planner for what you're showing us, even though I just released it in a video before this. So today I'm going to be showing you the heavy hits out of them level 90. I was supposed to have dropped this build 10 levels ago, like I said I was going to in the video, but honestly, it's <laughs> it's just so good. It's just so good, so much fun, and that's the one downside of being a content creator. You shouldn't play the same build for too long. You should kind of go off into separate ones, but this one is worthy of another video because this is what is like the epitome of the best build in the game. I know anyone can use the term best build, but for this one, we have it's crazy fast. The single target's insane. The survivability is insane. And what more can you want? It just feels so good. There are a few things that people are confused about with the build. So I'm going to clarify that in this video, show you pretty much that you've already seen some crazy clips of me clearing. I've cleared every single boss in the game with this build here. And it's one of those things where you're in a party with someone and they're like, what, how hard did you just hit the boss? Because they see it go from 80% to 30% in a second. And they're like, you must be pumping. And that's what this build does. So with that, if you haven't seen the video, I'm not going to go over all of the gear here. It's the same. The only thing you're going to notice is different is I'm not using Call of the Ancients. I found that around level 90, which is where I'm at now, is where it does in fact fall off. Now, the one thing that really pushes this build in front of pretty much all of the others is the bossing. A lot of classes need to stagger the boss very quickly or there are like one shot boss builds. However, if you took that build into a nightmare dungeon for like speed farming, they, they would be extremely slow. So with this, I found it to be the best balance and pretty much best of both worlds. I'm still not completely maxed out, which you'll see from the numbers on the screen, of course, that there is a lot to be added here, including multiplicative vulnerable damage, my Paragon's a mess. I haven't bothered to min-max it at all yet. I'm still going through things. I'm missing a ton of damage somewhere. I believe it's the Blood Rage node that I do not have that you take, right? Like everyone just takes that node here. Let me see if I can go to it. Your damage is increased by 25% multiplicative of your damage while berserking bonus. Current bonus, 60x. I don't have that. I should have that, but I don't have that currently. What am I waiting for? <laughs> That's a really good question, but it is what it is. So this can hit even harder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show people the most asked question about this build. It is an overpower build for anyone that's curious that doesn't already know this. And I'm going to show you how it works because there's three ways we can proc overpower. Technically four. There's a baseline 3% chance. I guess that's one way, but that's not what we care about. Then there's swapping weapons back and forth eight times, which seems to have a lot of people confused. This is your hardest hitting skill. Hardest hitting, and it's on this right here. Earth Strikers, after swapping weapons eight times, your next skill will overpower and deal 96% multiplicative increased overpower damage. That is a lot. Why is that a lot? Look at my overpower percent, 2,094%. Yes, so now we're multiplicative of that and it just goes crazy. But we also have your next attack will overpower. This, as we can see, every 20 seconds, your next skill is guaranteed to overpower, but it can be lunging strike, it can be a leap. So how do you play around that? You don't. And the final one we have is bone breaker. Every 12 seconds, your next skill is guaranteed to overpower. Power. So we have two time-based ones. You're never going to worry about these. And one of them that really matters, which is eight back and forth. So how do we make this possible? Well, if we know we have two time-based ones, we're going to be critting our first two hits of the run no matter what. So the fact that I know that and I've been farming with this for quite some time, I will pop my shouts. I will get the first proc here and then the second one there. That I can look forward to. From here, you want to always go... Hammer the Ancients, okay, I'm kind of getting owned here because I'm trying to explain things, but you kind of just want to go back and forth between Hammer the Ancients and Lunging Strike. This way we keep, if you look at my Fury, is rather high. We want to keep it high for the Hammer the Ancients bonus and for Edge Masters, which is on our neck piece here, Limitless Rage, which is on our other two-hander. So you pretty much want to be pretty close to Max Fury always, which is why one Lunging Strike one hammer the ancients anytime you use leap 
And this is where you're supposed to use leap to overcap your rage here. Anytime you use leap, it has to be a leap into Hammer of the Ancients. If you leap into a lunging strike, what did you just do? You put your Hammer of the Ancients on an odd number for this. Swap weapons eight times. The only way you can get around this is if you set the same weapon as lunging strike on your leap, which you can do. I just think it's better to use a two-handed because it's going to do more damage and why doesn't it feel bad like we said we have two random per second overpowers going off why doesn't it feel bad if one of them goes off on leap so the reason why leap doesn't feel so bad is because it's very easy and recommended to slot in veteran brawlers aspect onto your build because of just how strong overpower is so while you're going back and forth lunging strike hammer the ancients lunging strike hammer the ancients you are building up these stacks you're rarely going to get to 225 unless you really have no opportunity to use the leap but when you do use the leap and if it does in fact overpower you're going to one shot every single thing you hit while gaining the fury from it so now that we went over that let's continue with this dungeon here let's pop our leaps overpower for sure overpower for sure bam i mean look at these numbers and in case people are wondering where the i guess speed portion of this comes from i can kind of run this pretty similar to a normal clear a little bit of this we just keep on moving we skip uh what's it called you already know what we skip need to find a key okay well i don't want to find a key i'm being hunted by the blood seekers and uh, we can just do this so as we can see i pretty much picked the worst and i do mean the worst example of a dungeon to kind of showcase for this because i was planning on just blasting through this i mean didn't blizzard say they were going to make dungeons find the boss and win i mean that is kind of what they said right as we can see there i did just get an overpower on my lunging strike so you just have to make sure that you're keeping track of your stacks here okay so number eight is coming up okay so my next one is going to be a guaranteed overpower yeah so it's just a small thing you have to keep your eyes on I only mentioned this so many times because there were a lot of people asking questions about this on how you don't fall behind. I've done it before. I haven't made the mistake in a while because I've been playing the build for such a long time, but it does feel bad if you get to a boss and every single lunging strike is overpowered and then your Hammer the Ancient isn't overpowered. There's a pretty significant difference. I don't think you need me to explain that to anyone here in the difference between overpowering and a lunging strike compared to Hammer of the Ancients. So pretty much the, I guess, final tip I'm going to give you guys for this build is if you enjoy this build and you think it's fun, which I personally do, but everyone's going to have their own definition of fun. If you think this is fun, you are going to have a blast this season. Now this build isn't going to be for everyone. Upheaval is, of course, going to be the next build that I conquer or attempt to conquer at least. It should be a lot of fun because I... I've loved Upheaval since last season when I started playing it, and I look forward to it. I do need to get uh, the Hellhammer. That's going to be pretty important for what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to have to farm the Ice Boss, which, by the way, if you haven't done the bosses yet in this game, A, don't worry about it. B, just know that the Ice Boss, in my opinion, is probably the coolest boss in the entire game. Like, actually in the entire game. As you can see there, one of my overpowers was in fact a lunging strike, which is kind of feels bad. But one huge, I guess, benefit to this build is that Hammer the Ancients does a ton of damage on its own, just based on the tankiness and all of that good stuff that we are stacking here. So even if you don't overpower, I mean, you can see I'm quite comfortably killing pretty much everything. Now, of course, the only time you're going to see kind of like a discrepancy with that is going to be bosses but once you do lay in that overpower which you will unless you somehow get on an odd rotation like i was talking about with swapping your skills back and forth which is pretty simple i mean you only have to keep a really small eye on everything to pay attention to these things but if for some reason you get lost just look at your number and reshuffle your abilities based on the number you see it should be fairly simple from there 
Now, obviously, you cannot do this unless leap is off cooldown. So hopefully you didn't just use leap. I mean, we're only talking about a 12 second cooldown, 13 seconds. Maybe if you don't have CDR, it can, in fact, be longer. But I honestly wouldn't worry about it too, too much. Because if you're grouping with any other class, you're pretty much going to be carrying them, assuming you, I don't know, geared everything properly and all of that good stuff. So right there was a perfect example of a absolutely busted AUE hit here. And like I said, if you are playing with other classes and they are following you in nightmare dungeons or you're doing a boss together, you will get you will raise more than a few eyes with this build here because it does pretty crazy uh numbers. And when it pops, it takes everyone off guard. They're planning their survivability, and then the boss just gets deleted. All right, so here we are heading to the boss. Let's make sure everything's set. We have no swaps currently. So anytime we're heading to a new boss, what do we know? Our first two hits are going to be overpowered. One, two, there we go. Now we just go back and forth here. Oh God, this is the worst boss because it silences you. Yeah. All right, so we didn't get to one-shot that boss. I hate the drifting shade paired with... It's just such a bad combo, but as we can see here from the numbers you've seen from the footage and from this run, 10 million, 15, I think the highest is 18 million damage with all of the limitless rage, a full fury bar, and pretty much just all the stars aligning. We're at 18 million, not quite at 20 million, but I'm fairly certain once I get these glyphs to at least level 15, that's when we start to see the 20 million and based on how strong the paragon node that i'm not taking which again you should be taking on pretty much every single build blood rage because the multiplicative bonus of this is insane i mean we can see that 60x here so once we get that this build's probably going to shift and get even stronger doing 30 million 35 million it sounds like a big jump but when you see the multiplicative number actually being applied to everything while berserking with such high berserking uptime it that tends to happen so outside of that my necklace is absolutely abysmal if you want to know and i did include this in the planner as well the best necklace or the best i guess roll to get on your neck you want to buff this right here. As we can see, it's 15, 15, and 15, and nothing else is 15, 15, 15. These are all 5% multiplicative damage, and this is 15% multiplicative damage. So if you can score another three of brute force, the damage just takes off, which is why I'm really excited to use upheaval next because upheaval hits harder than hammer the ancients but it's a bit slower i'm going to do what i can to make it faster but it is a bit slower also if you really just want big numbers you can take unbridled rage again it's going to be significantly slower on hammer the ancients then unconstrained and the damage isn't too large i could hit 20 to 25 million per overpower now if i swapped on bridled rage but as I said, I'm capping out around 18 when the stars align with unconstrained. I'm okay with that because 18, I've done every boss in the game. The other thing I haven't done is a tier 100 nightmare dungeon, which those are probably, from what I've seen from the bosses and the fact that I did them before level 90, it's probably going to be harder than Duriel and all of that good stuff. So that's going to be the video today, talking about pretty much the best overall build I've ever played in Diablo 4, and I've played every single class in this game all of their meta builds barbarian obviously i've played every single skill and build possible on this and i've never seen anything as well rounded as this so i wanted to make one more video just easing people into this as more and more swap to such a powerful overall build and with that i'm going to retire the build my build guide does say level 30 to 80 if you want to use this all the way to the end game like i said all i did was i'm using triple shouts i know i hate it too but call of the ancients does fall off around level 90 if you want to keep using it honestly this build is so busted you can all the way to 100 and still clear everything but i did find it a bit more comfortable to play with the triple shouts swapping the ring to echoing fury and bold chieftains it is what it is and of course we're using the marshal 
Marshall, 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 yes, which is going to help with our cooldown as well. So that's going to conclude this video. If you enjoyed this content, smash that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you all in my next upload.